So hi Daniel, welcome back. You know, after a long time, right? Five minutes. <laughs> so um, you started at Helidon team, at Dimitri's team, right? This was your, your, your applied at Oracle. And uh, yeah, and yeah. this was uh, Dimitri's team, which does basically everything. So what I learned, Jaxby, Jersey and Helidon, right? And the Yason and... Yason, exactly. Yeah. And by the way, you saw the Yason logo? Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm not sure. This is Jason Binding, and I say, why this Duke looks that strange? And this is actually uh, Dimitri's humor, I think, because it was great. I saw it in Java One. I said, this looks a little bit strange, and then I thought about Yas, uh, not Yason, uh, Jason B, Jason Binding, not Yason, Jason B, Jason Binding, and Jason uh, Binding. You know, the Jason like the first name, and Binding the Jason. This is why it looks so strange. So this was actually a nice. Nice humor. Uh, so, yeah. uh, I, I never thought about it. Actually. Yeah, yeah. I thought a lot because I saw this this this, this logo. It's like, why did you look so strange? And Jason B, why why is this related to Jason B? And then I said, okay, Jason B. If you spell it, it's probably Jason, like the first name, and binding, like binding the Jason. And the and the Duke looked exactly like that. So okay. <laughs> yeah, I remember on, uh, only the Jer jersey logo. The uh... no, jersey logo is boring. It's just the yellow jersey. Yeah, but everybody remembers that because you know it's. Yeah, it's the yellow shirt. It's brilliant. so. What I thought is that you started at Sun, but you started at Oracle. So it's interesting uh, because you know the Jersey has all the Sun legacy. So most of the projects yeah. started at Sun. I, I always, I always wanted to work in Sun, but but it's it, it's wasn't Sun long enough. Yeah. <laughs> Before I, I I managed to get in, it, it was Oracle. But it doesn't. But I think that that it's still still the same. They are still the same people. And exactly, and, uh, exactly. This is what I would also see. The same the people like Oracle, like look. But most people which work with Java, that's actually the people with the Sun's mindset, regardless whether they started to you know at Oracle or not. But uh, there are lots of Sun people there, and uh, it feels similar. So, what is your the impression? So the first days at Oracle. So you like that? You are scared, or what's what's? Yeah, I was yeah I was scared and it, it, uh, somehow you know I, I had this this awe that oh, oh I'm finally here and yeah and I wanted to get there so, for so long so why you wanted to work for Oracle was it like the company fascinated you or why so why I mean you like the name you yeah. like you know what Iron Man because <laughs> because I already well well I I made my thesis about the NetBeans and I ah, knew the history okay. a little and 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 read a lot about the people working there so so that's why. I okay, so this is understandable. It's like you wanted actually at Sun. It's okay, Sun is gone, but it's bought by Oracle. So this is the natural choice, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, okay. It's Got, like it. That. Got it. Because I also um, at the beginning of Java, there was already Oracle, of course, and I started in Java in 1995, and I really liked Oracle always, and because the database was really great, and I lo uh, and I knew lots of people who really believed in Oracle. I remember I was a young developer, and I was in a room. And it was just you no know, the uh, database books from Oracle. It's like I think Oracle database five or six, the entire wall full of books, and the and the database database administrator sit there in the middle of the room, and he was really knowledgeable. So I asked him some questions, and he always had an answer, very technical. So this really impressed me. What I remember, and Oracle was a great steward before in the early Java days. So um, what I remember, they had uh, the Oracle database, and then there was IFS. I remember. It is called Internet File System. And I did the investigation of this this thing, and this was prior to 2000. So this was the time frame. And it was Java-based. And they had Aurora database engine. I remember the name because it was a cool name, Aurora. And this was Java-based thought procedures or something like this. So from the beginning, so they, I always, you know, if I, if I read about Oracle, it was... Mostly related, no Java related. So, and, and my impression was back then that in one point of time, you know, you can just run in Oracle database Java workload. This was my imagination. And what also happened, somehow at the conference, I found back then that Oracle had, uh, there was a Palm Pilot, like, you know, the small device. It looks like iPhone, but it's smaller. And there was an Oracle software development kit, which ran Java on this Palm Pilot. And I was, you know, huge Java fanboy. And so for me, it was a like, great. What Oracle does is really nice. And they had nice design and always on. So for me, I would say Oracle back then was a really interesting company. And uh, Sun was just natural because, you know, if you want to do something with Sun, it, there was JavaSoft first and Sun. And Oracle and IBM, the same. So IBM, there was, um, I don't know whether you remember, there were the... Uh, Huh. Now it's just the uh, IBM developer back then. It uh, back back then 
I forgot the name. There were two portals, uh, developer portals, which know the freshest Java stuff. And I always was there and downloaded the freshest stuff. Uh, it was not developer connection. They renamed it to, to, to now. It was... Um, uh, developer network or something like that. Yeah, developer network. JDC was from Sun. Java, JDC, Java developer network. Uh, Alphaworks was the first name of IBM. Alphaworks. This is what I'm. And the Alphaworks, there was uh, you could you could you know the the recent most recent libraries like Xeriscs. I remember one day or Java agents, crazy stuff you can download from there. Alphaworks and uh, there were two portals so from IBM. Java developer connection from from uh, Sun. Okay, so this was uh, my opinion about Oracle back then. So I thought, you know, you, something like me, that you saw, you know, the databases and the Palm Pilots and you were fascinated by Oracle, but you were later. So you just, you know, yeah. okay, this is the successor of Sun. Okay. Um, Before they, they, they bought Sun, it, it was, uh, Oracle for me was just a database. I didn't know much about mm -hmm. Oracle before. Okay. So, and what is your first day at Oracle? So you did something productive or you had, you know, to sign everything and work uh, so, you know, yeah, there was a lot of signing, I yeah. guess, and uh, and a lot of uh, training for how to uh, behave and uh, okay. how to solve some you know, personal situations. Don't, yeah, don't fight with yeah. Dimitri and something like this, right? Dimitri will yeah, win yeah, yeah, anyway. Exactly. So, uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, so, and uh, then you started to work on Helidon, or what, what was the story? No, no, I, I didn't start immediately on Helidon because I, like a newcomer, I have. I got uh, I got the the you know the, the the tasks for a newcomer. So so, so I've been updating uh, some examples in, in Metro and Jugsby, mm -hmm. and it was it was really awesome for me because because I, I really I'm a, 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 an XML enthusiast uh -huh. I would say. So so I was really it was really interesting and and uh, I was even fixing some bugs in there and uh, I was actually. I actually got to digging into the code of, of such a titans like uh, Koshuge, Kosuke Kawaguchi. Kawaguchi, uh huh? Yeah, I, I never know how to pronounce it. And, and Norman, Norman Walsh and uh, those guys, and it, it was really interesting. So, uh, so it, it was this was interesting enough for me, and uh, it was like you know, like I, I was like going to to the work with my nose up and. It's finally here, and it's, it's really great, and I, I was really happy. And uh, it was, and like it wasn't enough. Uh, I remember first time when uh, uh, when I met Yarda Tulak in the kitchen. Uh -huh. uh, I, 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 came, I came to the kitchen, and he, he was there and smiling on me and uh, greeting me, and I, I was like completely speechless, you know, because uh, so I was like, uh, I, I know you, and uh, I was so completely creepy. And yeah, Yaroslav uh, Turak is great, and the, the great story is uh, the Yaroslav Turak is an API guy, right? So this is uh, behind the APIs, on, and I'm from the business projects, you know. For me, the API can be interesting, but it doesn't have to be, you know. And uh, if I meet Yaroslav, we always had a chat, you know. So I tell, told him, hey, I don't need such an API management that you are doing. It is completely pointless, and and that is why <laughs> we had always fight about that, right? Because two complete perspective different perspective if you're building something like helidon let's say or ide you have to be really, really careful what you are exposing an api and how it is designed but in a business project they just don't matter at all because yeah. why i should build an api if it changes every other day right this is just stupid and uh so this was a very nice conversation with yaroslav always mm -hmm. yeah yeah w once someone starts to using something you don't want him to use it's it's, it's a nightmare so yeah yeah, you have to design the API. So you met Yaroslav, but the Yaroslav works for Gral team, right? I think. Yeah, yeah, and they've been sitting like almost next to me. Oh, so it was like okay. awesome, you know. And, ah, I saw him right now. It's, yeah, it was it was really great. And I was creepy, like some you know, like uh, some metal band fan <laughs> on the concert. I don't know. Oh, really? Uh, which uh, which bands do you like? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, uh, yeah. Lately, I I've been I, I read some article from the Atlassian that uh, that the most successful developers are listening to metal. Mm -hmm. So I never I, I actually never enjoyed metal much. So I've been trying to you know get in somehow. So I tried all <laughs> oh really? You read the article yeah. and then you try you not know, to force yourself to to hear to heavy metal. Yeah, I I I, I didn't try to force myself. I, I just was you know I, I never really, <laughs> that's, you know, that's funny. Tried okay. it so so why not? So so I tried it and I I, I finally I, I found one that I actually liked and that, that's called Nanovar. It's some I, I Manowar. Na Nanovar of steel. Menowar. Nanovar. Nanovar. It, 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 and yeah, and it, it's Italian band. 
metal okay. band, and and that's really interesting. It's 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 one metal Metal band War. I really you like. have to check it out. Uh -huh. yeah, I heard yeah, about they're... Metal War with, with the M. Yeah, they are making fun from them. It's, ah, it's kind of, fun of them is, is even better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so, so it was like that, and there was more people like that, like Lukas Jungmann and uh, and Dmitri and and the people who have always been reading, mm -hmm. you know, and then suddenly you are meeting them. Uh, Today yeah, in the, in the my impression, I, ne I never worked for Oracle, but uh, I, I know Dimitri a little bit and Yaroslav, and they have a great sense of humor, right? So you can have lots of fun with them, also they are very knowledgeable, right? Yeah, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a great team, it's, I, I'm just, it, it's just so sad that, that, that I've been only a few months there, and then, then, then this terrible virus came, and I have to be at home since then. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm one of those guys who actually enjoys the office, I guess. I miss that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, in your case, so one year longer would be better than you. You could, you know, get your idols and then and then be isolated. But for work, yeah, yeah, for, pro for, pro for productivity, is working at home perfect? Really, really good. In your case, yeah. not so, because um, maybe you know your work is too creative. So you work together. You know, you have to discuss things. So it is more fun to work together and. But if it, the software is no more that innovative, they're just working, then it's better at home. You know what I mean? So for specific, you know, if you have some brainstorming, it's always better in person. But yeah, uh, yeah, you, to, to, to getting things done, sometimes better at home. Yeah, with kids, it's maybe a little complicated. You know, yeah. the schools are closed. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's getting harder and harder. And, and it's also hard to actually, you know, make, make, the, make, make the borders when, when you should stop. Yeah, working and uh, and and yeah. This is my my problem. I'm uh, no problem. This is actually I don't. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm not. I was never employed. I was always freelancer. So I don't have such orders, which is now perfect. But at the beginning, it was really hard. You know, when to stop working because uh, there is a lot to do. I could work, you know, all the time, but you have to stop at some point, right? But if you consider yeah, yeah. your work as fun, it's not as bad. I would say so. Yeah, yeah, it's. Um. It's I, I think it's it's great to do something to enjoy it. Yeah, I really, I still really enjoy it. So, um, and uh, yeah, and uh, so you started to work with Metro and of course XML a lot, Jaxby and stuff like that. And then you you m met the Yaroslav from NetBeans fame and now GraalVM and Dimitri and all the other guy. And what happened then? So you mess up the parser and you were laid off from the <laughs> or what? <laughs> what did you? Yeah, yeah so something like that. I, uh, I was th then I was tasked to create a uh, demo for Helidon connecting to Kafka. Why this? Uh, to... uh, why you? Why you had to switch from Metro to Helidon? So it's like sometimes they uh, approach you. Was it like you know the uh, the the Metro like your introduction to the technology and then you were always meant to work on Helidon or was it your choice to switch to a Helidon team? I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Well, that, that's something only Dmitry knows. Oh, okay. So, okay. You have to so, ask him. So, mm -hmm. so, so, so I, I, I've been tasked with this, you know, connecting to Kafka, and and I was starting the digging around because I didn't know much about Helidon, and mm -hmm. uh, I was and I was quite missing some some you know easygoing API like the Spring has, you know, just annotate some method and uh, configure mm -hmm. something, and then then expect some messages messages to. I mean, and, and so I've been digging even deeper and uh, and found out the microprofiler active messaging spec, which uh, seems like like quite reasonable and yeah. uh, and easy enough to implement. So, yeah, so incoming I have implement... and outgoing, doesn't the two annotations, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Those, those two methods were, were actually all I've been inter interested in. From yeah, exactly. Start. So, uh, so I tried to implement the POC or over the weekend or something and uh, and then i got the green light to continue implementing the full spec that was it so uh, then so i've been you know uh, uh probing around even more and i have quickly realized that i can't move much forward without the microprofiler active operators okay which is you know the abstractions over the reactive operators to, so we can easily switch them to switch the implementation of them and uh, so i went for actually implementing the operators myself Oh. Because Helidon 1.x got only a few reactive operators, and uh, uh, those were used mainly internally. And uh, uh, so I tried to implement myself. I, I thought it's a good idea because you know I, I knew what reactive streams are because you okay. know I knew how to use flat map, right? So I okay. was like an expert. So so I tried it, and th there was like everywhere in every article about it, there was always a warning: don't do this, don't don't implement. 
the okay. operators by yourself. So, so, so I tried that, and uh, and uh, while I've been imp implementing, then I have realized that I can actually implement uh, more operators to the Helidon reactive engine itself because it's it's uh, implementing the Flow API. So I have started to implementing the operators uh, in the Helidon engine and uh, implementing the Flow API and then actually re reusing them with uh, an adapter in the okay. reactive streams. So to the listeners, so what Helidon is, is like a runtime, it provides Java SE and micro profile flavors. So I mostly use the micro profile. Java SE is even leaner, but uh, is more, I would say, Helidon specific. And what are you saying here that Helidon is based on the Flow API? I assume this is the JDK 9 uh, Flow API, right? The uh, reactive Flow? API from JDK. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, exactly. Where you have the subscription and the oh, it's subscription and the two three Sub subscriber part. And, subscriber. Uh, yeah, exactly. This uh, thing between, so you can actually so uh, JDK ships with the reactive programming built in toolkit. You can just use it, and this is the and seems like I didn't know about that that Helidon uses this behind the scenes, so it is built on this reactive flow engine. You yeah. said, yeah, uh, and and your yeah, assignment. All, all the all, all the reactive APIs are using that to, you know, to uh, uh, to provide you with the reactive stream. So we, we we need some operators to actually work with that because without the operator, you can connect it to different implementation uh, of the operate reactive operators. But but that that was somehow cumbersome. So uh, yeah, and and the and the and the the whole point of the the flow API is like you have message producer and message receiver, and the message produces and the receiver receives. But uh, the receiver has the opportunity to tell the producer, don't produce too much because I cannot consume it enough. So the back pressure, somehow communication is backed in. So this is the, the entire thing yeah. of, of the reactive, right? That, 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 that was the simplest explanation I have ever heard, actually. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Oh, thank you. And, 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 and the <laughs> entire holy grail of reactive programming is actually that you have a collection. This is how I explain it. So you have collection or list. And uh, you are subscribing and it gets, you know, you get a new stuff in without doing anything. So uh, the collection just grows or whatever. There are new elements in the list and you are consuming with Java 8 stream mapping, filtering, flat mapping, whatever. It's, it's, it looks like if the data structure were alive, right? So because you get more data in and, and you're just reacting to the data. So and therefore, yeah, yeah. the reactive programming makes only sense in my eyes to stuff like Kafka, or uh, or structures which are similar to that, where you have you know events happening just, and you are you are you have a data structure which reflects to these events, and you can subscribe and do something about it, right? So this is the the entire idea. And why I'm saying this because what I saw, I hated reactive programming the last years because there was fashionable. In lots of projects, developers try to do something with reactive programming without having you know the event sources. So they got the idea to pull the HTTP server and do something. And this is completely, in my eyes, what is pointless because you get a lot of problems with it. So it's mean like if you have, you know, request response API and try to be reactive, it is not always a good idea to do that, except you are doing this only not to block threats, you know? So like a workflow engine, so this could be a good idea. So um, now, uh, now we are on the same page. So you use the JDK reactive stuff because the uh, Helidon already used that and the reactive operators from MicroProfile, this is the flat maps and all the implement the all the functions, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to implement them because the MicroProfile is only, you know, the, the API and mm -hmm. and you need to, some underlying implementation of the map and flat map and filter. Mm -hmm. So so to to pass the TCK for the messaging, I needed the to pass the TCK for the reactive streams operators and uh, for that, I need those operators. So, so I started to implement. So, so you went back to Dimitri, say, "Hey, uh, bad news. We are done. Yeah, well, not it, really. It so I have, to, I have to implement now. You know, two hundred <laughs> operators from a completely different spec, which you actually don't care, but I have to do it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it went some, somehow like that. And yeah, yeah. If I only knew how 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 much work it is, I, I wouldn't even try. I guess. But this but, is what uh, I wanted to ask you because um, this is actually a lot of work, right? Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> yeah, it, it was a lot of work, but it was interesting work. I have learned so much about concurrent programming and those things. So, or do you use behind the, behind the scenes completable future a lot and stuff like that, or just even lower level? Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's not only it's not only about locking and that stuff because it's it's usually the locking it's uh, uh, is uh, expensive. 
and in the operators you atomic have data structures to, yeah yeah atomics and uh, semaphores uh, stuff like spin that. logs and, oh, and okay. those things nice and, and you and you have to you you have to be really fast because with that, that operators you can quickly you can you can be snowballing the performance like really quickly so yeah. so if you if you if you have some performance if you're losing some performance only you know marginally then uh, then when you know you do it on a million items uh, being flat map other thousand on each item it's, it will quickly get out of hand so so you just have to be really performant so so, so what it means that you alone managed to implement uh, reactive messaging uh, for MicroProfile and uh, the reactive uh, operators? No, I, I, no, no, I didn't. I, I just tried. Okay. <laughs> and and and, uh, and uh, when I tried to implement those uh, operators, uh, uh, I quickly was uh, contacted by uh, by guys from performance team who are those who are monitoring the performance of the whole halogen and um, they have discovered it i have slowed down some parts oh. of the halogen terribly so, <laughs> so 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 i have been contact and those are those those are the guys one of them especially uh, helped me a lot to uh, to find the the problems and okay. and uh, and uh, taught me a lot about the concurrent program i didn't know even exist so so it was really interesting and uh, as i've been progressing further and further then something completely incredible happened and uh, in one uh, uh, i think it was the uh, reactive uh, streams for jvms specification mm -hmm. uh, th there was a discussion under under some issue uh, about the spec or about the tc case i, I guess and uh, there was a david karnock i okay. somehow noticed the discussion and he noticed our work on the operators, so so uh, he offered to contribute implementation of those needed operators to Halidon, which was like, oh my God, this is great, you know. Okay. So so he literally implemented most of the operators, rewrote all my you know not really performant work, and uh, then we. The, did... the David is the guy behind uh, reactive uh, manufacturing. Uh... Eric Jawa. Eric Java, Eric Java. I, I uh, think even be, be, be behind uh, uh, some part of the re reactor. And reactive so, manifesto, I, I think as well he was involved, right? No? With Jagger. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, sure. But Eric uh, yeah, Java so, is one of the, I would say, uh, oldest implementations. Yeah, it was yeah, also yeah. used heavily by Netflix back then, I think, I remember. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I think that they have even uh, helped him to develop it by contribute by lending him a few developers to help, I guess. Okay, and and oh. and and right now he just wrote it as a, does the guy work for Oracle, the David? No, no, no. no and he just uh, said, no, okay, as far my, as I know, <laughs> in my leisure, I would just implement it for you. This was the deal, or what? Yes, and I was like, it it was I was so impressed because why are you telling this here? You had to go to back to Dimitri. So look how productive I was, you know. In two days, I managed to to or or no, two days, three weeks took me, you know, to implement all the operators. Yeah, yeah, it's. This yeah. would be a it, yeah cool stunt. It, it was be, that would be unbelievable. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it, it's really great because the, the, the David is like like a demigod of reactive programming. So, but this is great. So, what it means is that this is open source, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So it means that he contributed lots of stuff, and now we have another implementation of microprofile reactive programming by Helidon. We have one from Quarkus from Red Hat, and the ones for, from you. Yeah, yeah, from me and David. And have and, you looked at the small right? from a performance team and, and small right yeah, implementation? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we are, uh, yeah. We are faster now. If you, <laughs> okay. Yeah, we we have been comparing that. Uh, I I couldn't get to them with with the performance. I, I, I've been trying to close to, to get close to them, but I but, but I just couldn't. But but uh, when David rewrote the operators, it just we just went the performance yeah. went through the Very roof. Good. It was and like, why you didn't use the small right? You couldn't, or it was the license not compatible. What's the problem with the small eye implementation back then? You know, we are trying to uh, keep a, uh, we are trying to keep the uh, uh, limit the number of third party dependencies uh, as much as we can. Very so good. the Helidon is, isn't actually like Spring that you download half of the internet. You know, just just to very good. Hello I have now uh, in the previous podcast had a conversation uh, with SAP about uh, how to deal with external dependencies, and we we talk. I'm sorry, my opinion is we don't have any. Or we have our reasons, right? 
But uh, this could be a strategic reason. We implement by ourselves so that we are not depending on someone else. So then we can manage everything by ourselves. So it could be could be also joint venture. They'll say we are contributed actively to Smorai, and then it's, we take ownership. But it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we have to. We wanted to have more control yeah. over the uh, con concurrency related stuff in the, in the Halidon, like even in the Halidon core itself, because uh, we are you know we are trying to be ready for uh, uh, for adopting the loom as far as, as as possible when when the yeah. times comes because everyone in oracle is like you know super excited about the loom so so we want to be ready so so when we had different uh, operators and we had some problem with some concurrency stuff inside the operator then we would have to do something about it really complicated and way. i think you have Th more this way we can. opportunities out also to hack your stuff, right? If something doesn't work, you can very quickly hack this around. And if yeah, you are depending yeah, on yeah. that party in the early stages, it's always a problematic. So yeah, I'm with you with that. I just wanted to know why. Um, and this is also what excites me because uh, Helidon is an Oracle project, a fresh one, and a complete different take on the entire stuff. It is also complete different goals to Quarkus. Also, it is very similar to Quarkus, but you, you, you are following complete different approaches. And I had to know the... the um, discussion with uh, Dimitri already, and uh, he's obsessed about performance, which is also great. Uh, for me, it's less important because Java is already fast enough. In my projects, we never had serious performance problems if we had a problem with database or external I.O., but in our system, is you know... But uh, it seems like what can happen, of course, that Helidon could become part of the Oracle Cloud infrastructure or API gateway, whatever, and if someone builds somewhere serious with it, complete different story, right? Complete different story. Like uh, if I would build Netflix streaming, let's say, and use Helidon for that, they have complete different requirements than in my, you know, projects where we have several hundreds or several thousand clients is a complete different scale. And what's also exciting is that you are working for Oracle, where Java is also developed. So it potentially you could, you know, learn about Mark Reinhold and all the other guys, Brian Goetz, and work closely with them to provide better, you know, Loom experience or being a Loom uh, test framework. So what I will do is, in your case, I will write a mail, um, email to Brian Götz and the others and say, look, we are Helidon and we have the reactive stuff and we would like, you know, to be your proof of concept of the project loop. So we have everything in place. This would be an, another opportunity, you know, for you. Uh, uh, well, I think we are, uh, we already are. The, the, oh, okay. Like, so this was an uh, old for news with him. Okay. So you are even more excited. Yeah. So, so you have to be really set. Now you, you learn all your idols, you know, from your youth. <laughs> and now you are closed down, you know, in a flat in Prague and you can only see yeah, them via yeah, TV exactly. again. <laughs> so what you what you had 20 years ago, all the time you, you see them on YouTube and now it's just bi-directional YouTube, I would say, right? Yeah, like, uh, what are you using usually? Zoom or something like this? Yeah, yeah, we are, we are zooming. Yeah, in zooming, the, yeah. I don't, yeah. In the Incredible, so still. So David and you implemented two micro-profile complete specification. Yeah, yeah uh, well... Um, with David, we have been working with the, on the operators. Then I, I was finally able to actually finish the, the messaging <laughs> or to, to pass the pass the TCK. So, so so after a few months, I was I was I was finally able, you know, to create a demo, uh, receiving the messages from Kafka. So <laughs> it was. But um, yeah. actually, think about your impact, right? So you you working one year for Oracle and you created uh, uh, integration with Kafka. Which basically means it will be one of the more popular Elidon features. I it will be used by lots of projects. Yeah, yeah. well, I, I wasn't alone. There was no, no, but still, and, I mean, and, you are not alone. But yeah, and uh, and uh, even with the Kafka connector, I, I get great help from, from one of my colleagues who, who really did a lot of work. So, so, so it wasn't only me. It's, I was, I, I was just, uh, I just didn't know enough to. Don't do that. <laughs> okay. I guess it's just like that. What are the dirty secrets of reactive programming? So if you uh, if you start with reactive programming, always looks everything looks nice. But what no one no one says how it starts, right? So if you have Kafka, for instance, the lowest possible Kafka API, the consumer API, while this is ugly like hell, yeah. right? So yeah, you have yeah, a yeah. while. It looks like Java JDK one one, the first you know hello world example. So you have a while loop. I think it's called take or something. So you have to know to pull yeah, you Kafka have to pull, Q, pull the stuff. which is incredible. And so this is and and the Kafka streams is already really nice and reactive, I would say. But behind the scenes, poll, polling always happens. Yeah, there is also a loop inside. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, I did look inside, and yeah, it's it's which is it's really disappointing, right? Because uh, what I always thought 
that reactive programming, that deep into the weeds of reactive programming, there will be like, you know, signals or events, I.O. events, but usually, mostly, yeah, just polling, right? Yeah, but, but it's not only, you know, the reactive, the reactive stream isn't only about pushing, you can be pulling also, it's, that's why you have yeah. to, you know, uh, the, the re request machinery there. So you, you you can actually, you can use the pulling use case also with the reactive stream and it should work just like that. It, it, that's that's why it's so cleverly created all, all, all the specs so, so you, can, yeah, but you can actually use both directions too. For instance, uh, if you, I, uh, I was actually not prepared well enough to already to do is to, to look at your guide, but um, recently I, I looked at the Quarkus guide and uh, what they have a nice example with Quarkus and reactive micro profile messaging, but uh, they don't have, you know, how the data flows in. So the data is generated by OT devices and this is there in topics. But if you try to push something reactively, it's no more that easy. So try, you know, to integrate JAXRS service with PUT, which stores something in the reactive stream. So you have to know there is you know, an emitter bridge, and with that you can do this. But this is like a secret knowledge, and there is actually in no tutorials there, right? Yeah, yeah. It's because it's not. Uh, uh, it's meant for the next version of the messaging spec. It's yeah, okay, but this is a very common use case, and if you search for Stack Overflows, yeah, many yeah, people and, have and, you know exactly and, the question, you know. But and, because and everyone who, who saw the spec was actually complaining about it. it okay, yeah. I didn't knew that. Sorry. Uh, because uh, I had the it, It's possible to do it without the emitter. You can use the uh, submission publisher in uh, Java mm -hmm. 9 and above. Mm -hmm. And it works almost the same like the emitter, which doesn't have so much uh, so much function, but but, but you, can, you can use it to actually emit. So, so you create the outgoing method with the publisher builder and uh, you uh, register there your publisher, uh, the submission mm -hmm. publisher. You, you have to use the... Uh, Flow adapter for for that, so 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 you, you can switch from uh, to the okay. different uh, interfaces and uh, and you can use the su submission publisher. Okay. This this is this is this is possible, but submission publisher is final. So you, in most of the CDI, you can't actually inject it anywhere. So 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 it's not the uh, it's not that nice like with the uh, proprietor emitter created. So yeah. we are working on our own emitter to have it uh, in time for the next version. Yeah, very of the good. Spec. Because uh. Recently, I was asked to create a proof of concept uh, where we had a, lot, a, um, a large amount of data had to be uploaded and then parsed. And I said, okay, it will be in Kafka in one point of time. So we do everything reactively because uh, we can. If we do reactively, everything, right? And then it's okay, I get the data via REST, JAXRS. How to store it reactively, you know? Because what I wanted to do is to have like an incoming sync and then just use incoming and outgoing annotations so everything is just standard. And I find this, found this solution, but I say, okay, no one talks about that, right? In, initial, mm -hmm. initial data ingest. And then it was easy. Yeah. Then I could just do whatever. I have one example with reactive, uh, how it's called, reactive messaging with incoming and outgoing and one topology example where with Kafka streams. But the beginning was, I said, uh, Open Liberty tutorial, they did a hack where they had, you know, a singleton with the emitter and replace something inside. So, okay, this is uh, doesn't look nice. And okay, I got you. This is the next version of the spec. Then it's addressed because I couldn't believe that no one, no one, you know, addressed the problem yet. So yeah, it's it's somehow a public secrets that nobody is talking about it, but everyone knows it's needed and, uh, and okay. it's prepared. I think in uh, in Quarkus they already have some uh, proof of concept emitter, and they are using that. It's not the the one from the spec, I guess. They, but, they have uh, the mutiny but, stuff. But I, but by, the mu uh, they have mu mutiny. Mutiny is like the reactive framework from then, and they try to make yeah, it yeah, simpler. They, have, they, have, they own implementation of the operators like, like we do, and it's called mutiny. They have different, completely different flow of the operators. It's really interesting. Yeah, and, and even they, they, they get rid of flat maps, so they have their own, you know, yeah, 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 they yeah. simplify. I, I guess that's, a, that, that's the most, it's, it's a harder operator to, to understand i guess for for the newcomer so so, so i guess the the flat map the, i would say it is you cannot explain flat map unless you had the problem so if you you know yeah. if you if you if you do something with flat map and you see then you need actually a list and not in every slot another list you know so if you if you integrate it from 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 external source and you get an array and you want to have a just a stream just a slots just objects and not 
in every object is again an array. So you you don't like uh, you don't. I mean, then okay, flat map solves the problem because it it flattens the you know the the arrays. But it's really hard to explain. And if I show them a source code, that is absolutely obvious with the with yeah, the flat map. Yeah. yeah. And this is most of it, such cases. If you do it, then it is very simple. But you cannot just construct an hello world example and explain it to someone because this is like you know, it, if you don't have the problem, it's hard to understand. Yeah, I guess I guess that's that's uh, what's nice in Mutiny that it's it's more user friendly for for the newcomers and yeah. But 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 for the for for the people who who already did something reactive and and knows that you know the operators are usually have the same names over they will hate it I all guess. the implementation. The, I guess the, because you know why? Because the the functional people they are all, they, they don't like the object oriented people and uh, they they say okay <laughs> we are no the, the we are talking we are the Lisp guys right and. Uh, and they invested a lot of time in all the operators. And if someone takes, you know, the operators away and makes something simpler, I don't, I don't think, you know, you are popular then. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess. So it, it's kind of a black magic and everyone is a, is but a magician. What, what I really like that the Quarkus guys try to make it simpler. And they, I mean, this is like, you know, revival of the early Java days. So we have a Helidon, which is complete opposite to Quarkus and a similar area. So I would say it's really nice for me as developer to see both frameworks, a complete, you know, you are obsessed with performance. Quarkus is uh, obsessed, you know, with startup time, and everyone is obsessed about something. So, I mean, uh, and this is a really like that. I have to say, it was like the early Java e days with all the servers, you know. Yeah, yeah, and it's not only two, two of us. It's it's really it, it's really Cumulus. Cumulus it, is huge. Uh, you heard about Cumulus? No, no. Cumulus I, I EE. Know. So there were um, there were huge projects in Slovenia, I think. And they were in the workshops, and they were even committed to the Cumulus EE runtime. This is a microprofile runtime in Slovenia. It's huge. They, they, they use it on government work and stuff like that. Cumulus EE is the name. Uh -huh. I, you, I never heard about yeah, it. You, you see? You, you heard about Piranha Cloud. Yeah, I, I heard about Piranha Micro, I guess. It's really no, a lot of this micro. is Payara Micro. Complete different stuff. The Piranha uh -huh. Micro is the guy who did the security for Jakarta. They have their own Piranha Cloud. They already started a small microprofile implementation just with servlets. Not this is interesting, and uh, they 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 uh, will implement Jakarta A9, and it starts fast like crazy. So it is it is really Piranha dot cloud. So for the listeners, for you, check it out. So we get uh, oh, yeah. lots of interesting new wave frameworks. Open Liberty, right? Um, and Whitefly bec uh, comes with now. You can start it via Jar, not like an application server. You can also start as Jar. You know, also interesting. And because you know, Quarkus is like repackaged. Whitefly a little bit, so lots of the libraries are from Whitefly back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But interesting. So let's say I would like to have a server socket integrated to your framework. And server socket, your I start thread, and the server socket, you know, accepts data. I could integrate it with Helidon, right? S server socket. Yeah, uh, Java Net, uh, Java dot io server socket, or Net Java Net server socket. You know server socket, of course. I, I haven't. What? No, I, I, I really we don't we know will that. cut it out this section. Server socket is a Java. If you would receive over the network, you know data. This is server socket. So yeah, I've been I've been using that web socket. But server socket oh. is, is plain Java. You are an enterprise. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I never tried it. So I, I will have to. And no problem. If uh, if I will send you via sockets, Java IO. I think it's Java Net. Java Net. Java Net socket. Server socket. Oh. If I send you something over the wire without web socket, I mean. Java to Java. Um, then you uh, the socket is the client part, server socket, of course, the server socket part, and you start a thread, and you have to block, and you will receive the messages. So, and I assume this will be always the case that uh, if you have a data source, some kind of data, I will have to pull right, and this yeah, reactive programming will hide this for me, and yeah. and translate it's you know the polling happy. into events, right? There, there will always be some spinning. Yeah, always some spinning. Yeah. This is the yeah. unfortunate part, actually. But it will be much, much nicer with Loom, I guess. That's what we are all waiting for, right? That that I think that that uh, there is a lot of you know that uh, everyone is uh, comparing the reactive with the coming Loom and saying, okay, that what will happen with all those reactive infrastructure when the Loom comes because it won't be necessary anymore. You know. This is what I don't understand the argumentation because for me Loom yeah. is you get lots of threads which are cheap. So you can use request response in case you need, you have request response without any penalty. So you are not forced to transform your request response scenarios 
into reactive stuff, right? This is the impact of Loom. But still, yeah, yeah. Ka for Kafka, I don't care. I still need your reactive messaging APIs because Loom doesn't help me. I mean, Kafka yeah. can but, but, spin better or faster. I don't care with Loom. But I will like to have an, a kind of data structure which reacts to events from Kafka. And I can just say map, filter, whatever, right? So this is complete opposite, I would say, solution. So Loom and reactive programming, they don't have nothing in common, I would say, right? I think I think the reactive is really practical for the messaging. The messaging yeah. itself, it's, it's, that's just how those two things works together really great. But uh, all those places where the reactive has been, you know, forced by being a buzzword over the years, yeah. now those will, we will have to get rid of because because it's it will be obvious that it has no exactly no, uh, but it was uh, never it was always pointless in most of my yeah, projects yeah, with, was, a, with yeah. a standard application server we could you know handle more load than everyone expected so and and then you know uh, many people just used reactive stuff to be reactive without measuring what they can achieve without reactiveness and usually the problem in stock projects is uh who cares if the application server can handle no 10,000 requests per second if the database dies or you have a logs you know it's not like we're yeah. just doing like video transcoding or 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 chat applications usually you always in enterprise I'm, i know i'm boring enterprise developer you have something you know a database or or a host system or something in the background and this is usually the problem not your front end yeah, yeah. usually i talk usually it's not there are cases where you need you know the full power and then you can do reactive and we already had an, a nice conversation with Clement from, from Quarkus, and he said for reactive, if you have request response, for instance, right, uh, in a workflow engine where you are blocking and you have lots of shut threads, then reactive makes, of course, sense. And if Loom comes out, then we can do it just, you know, in the Java way. We can just call and wait. Mm -hmm. No one cares. Th this would be the impact. So I'm not forced to use reactive programming for non-reactive, how to call it, resources, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, like you know, the, the course of the web servers won't, won't have to be uh, built on Netty and recycle everything because... Yeah, because the, have, the, at the end of the day... The, new threads as, as, as you go. So. Yeah, the Java developers actually were not stupid. You know, the application servers are actually pretty sophisticated already. It's not like, you know, with uh, some reactive framework on top of application server, you are smarter than, you know, the developers who built these servers. Because I don't know what is behind... I think you're also using Netty, right? In the Helidon behind the scenes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, what, what's the Helidon stack? You know that from JVM up to your to Kafka, so to Kafka. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. explain all the layers. You know, from from JVM Helidon to Kafka. Yeah, there, there is a Mate which is uh, uh, which is serving the uh, stuff over, over the network. Mm -hmm. um, then we have a Jersey, which is uh, actually injecting every endpoint for the rest. Uh, in the Helidon MP, of course. Then do you have thread pools or something in between? Uh, y uh, yes, we do. But uh, if, if if you work with the, the reactive stuff, you are actually trying to, to to you know to 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 have only only one. So so the one which is served by by the net and is taking the thread and it, it's mm -hmm. trying to use it uh, like as long as right? possible. So, yeah, like the event. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a, the event loop, and, and you are trying to, to be not switching as long as possible. So Can you have you multiple to... event loop, loops? Might make it sense to have multiple event loops in parallel? Well, that depends on the use case. Yeah. I guess if you if you do everything right, you shouldn't need it, right? Okay. So, <laughs> but but, but uh, sometimes there can be use cases when, when it's actually uh, necessary because... Okay. You know, if if you are saving, if you are serving uh, reactively some input stream, and you need need to serve, you know, the bytes from that input stream, uh, from the behind, you actually need to do uh, two threads because otherwise you will be actually, you, you know, ho holding the the end of uh, mm -hmm. of the rope you you, you are yeah. you are riding on. So, yeah. so th that can be one of the use cases. But I guess if you do it all right and reactively, you should be okay with one thread only. Mm -hmm. So it means the jersey in Helidon is also reactive. I'm not sure. It's I I, I think it's it, it's used the way that it's actually injecting the stuff and mm -hmm. uh, and the serving uh, uh, serving the the uh, under layer is is again the netty. It's just it's just a layer between the netty and uh, okay and the code itself. So I will send uh, a JSON message to jersey, so it will be received by netty, and then. I will. We have the strange emitter, which we're going to be fixed in the next version, but and then it lands in your 
context in the framework, right? Yeah, yeah. If you uh, if you will use the submission publisher, which is in the Java Util concurrent package, then there will be there. Then you will have to use some threads pool to create new threads because it can uh, mm -hmm. it can serve multiple subscribers uh, and it's buffering and everything. So so it needs to create new threads and work with them. But if you use our own, we have it's called bu buffered emitting publisher. I think it's it should be some uh, under implementation uh, under the coming emitter, then uh, you actually will be okay with one thread only, the thread which is, you know, starting stream. So, uh, so in the whole reactive pipeline like that, there will be no new thread created okay. at all. So, so you should but be okay. But later you could create more threads with Ulu. Yeah, yeah, you can, yeah, because sometimes you have to do something lengthy, you know, like you can have some map operation and in map uh, uh, based on every item which can, came, you, you need to do something which takes long. So, so you can't use the map because otherwise you would be blocking. So you, you will use, uh, it's called, you will use flat map, which is able to wait for the completion stage. But it's not actually waiting for the completion stage because the waiting for the completion stage is, is being done on the thread which you uh, ah. gave mm -hmm. to the completion stage when you create mm -hmm. the run async and mm -hmm. then there's a parameter for the uh, for the pool, so, so so only the waiting is done on the new thread, mm -hmm. but the original thread is never never being stopped. So yeah. so the pipeline never so what never it gets hold. If I would like to access the database and the uh, I would block the event loop, then it will stop, which is bad. So and therefore, yeah, yeah. this is waiting for a database. I will have to pass over another thread which waits for me but doesn't block the event loop. Exactly, that's the pattern, right? For and instance. that's that's in your control. That you just have to not. Not block the reactive stream itself because it's being, in the best case scenario, it's being served only one by one thread, and you don't want to block that because otherwise you, you can end up with. So what it means the, the entire Helidon could just run on one thread. Uh, of course, no Kafka excluded because they start their own threads. But yeah, yeah. It, it could actually. Yeah. So the the memory consumption consumption is really minimal because threads are consuming memory, and in your case, it will be one thread. Yeah, yeah, one thread with really long stack traces. <laughs> <laughs> one, one long, one thread with really long stack traces. So this would be a perfect title for the podcast, right? Helidon, one thread with long stack traces. Now we won't do it. Yeah, this. yeah. <laughs> it, 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 that's that's quite that's quite an interesting thing that that I have discovered when I was trying to implement the first publisher that. Uh, you can't actually, you know, you use the one thread for, for, you know, like serving your subscriber. Let him with this thread actually request other items mm -hmm. and then serve based on this thread coming from the request, actually serve another item because eventually you will uh, run to the stack overflow. So you have to cut it out somewhere. So, so, so there is, it's called, a, it's called a trampoline. I ah, think. this is this. And, okay. and you have to create a trampoline and you have to be actually, you have to actually it's, it's something like whip you you are just you you, you know swinging your whip inside the uh, uh inside the pipeline and uh when it's done it's it returns you you wait and and you have to actually buffer the uh, requests and you can't hold uh, the thread for another serving from this request call because mm -hmm. otherwise you will end up with with this really long stack tracing. It, it was really something I did, never know before and never run into it in spring. So, so okay. that was a really interesting thing to And to um, now, what uh, what other sources are you supporting? Can you in Helidon just read from Kafka and write to WebSockets or out of the box? Or you know what I mean? Uh, you can see an incoming and outgoing. How many outgoing adapters do you have or are you supporting? Yeah, yeah, we have uh, we have connector for Kafka now, and we are finishing the JMS connector and connector for Oracle AQ, which mm -hmm. is uh, the uh, advanced queuing in the database. It's really interesting. It, it it's based on the JMS connector itself. It's just uh, more convenient, and we already can connect to the Oracle streaming service, which is in OCI. It's something really similar to Kafka. It's it's uh, mm -hmm. easier to grasp and to set up. And uh, uh, it has the Kafka API, so it's already possible to connect it with our Kafka connector. It was worked great, and we are also working on the native connector, so we can go around the uh, the Kafka connector because there is some, some you are losing some um, lot of configuration which you don't okay. actually need. And and WebSockets one point of time or SSE as well, right? Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, it, it works. It, I have some POCs somewhere. I, I think. Oh, really? Uh, with web it, it, even examples in Halidon. We, we have Very examples good. in Halidon with WebSocket. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's even possible to do. I, I did some article lately. It was about uh, actually uh, uh, using the WebSockets as uh, for the reactive communication. So uh, uh, you can easily connect the with the WebSockets as it's by the directional communication. You can actually connect uh, to some uh, reactive code on the client, so you can get the full stack. Reactive, you know that yeah. if you have the, the uh, how it's called the Rx Java for JavaScript, you you can connect it to it together, and uh, you just have to relay the signals. As, Even better, uh, why I'm asking in a project uh, last year, what we did without Rx Java, just straight JavaScript. So uh, the architecture was uh, the client wrote uh, a message or message was just REST interface. The deal was the REST interface was void, so we never got something back. So we wrote actually something to the Redux store. This is a singleton in JavaScript. And um, or forget about the Redux store. So uh, we wrote directly to the server. The server uh, did was put or post. The server, the first thing it did, it wrote a message to Kafka. Then processing happened asynchronously. Uh, um, and we got a result in a different Kafka topic, which was mapped to WebSocket. And the client got notification, not only this client, all other clients got the notification via WebSocket. And the WebSocket was mapped to the Redux store again. And the Redux store, if you change the state in the Redux store, uh, it notifies all the web components. So we got asynchronous unidirectional data flow, which simplified the client. It was really easy, you know, to build the server. without Because this RxJS is painful in the client and lots of dependencies again. And mm -hmm. we did it without any dependencies and it worked great. So this is why I ask you know whether the translation between um, Kafka and WebSockets comes out um, out of the box in Helidon because it's usable. No, no, we we are we are thinking about some solution for that. There are some technical problems involved, so, okay. so it's it's just the idea. It's it's, it's okay. Not... Then there's another solution which is equally interesting: SSE server sent events because Jersey is already able to submit to generate them. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, we. Because uh, this yeah, is standard we, browser standard, and this is and this is like we use SSEs as a fallback to WebSockets. Sometimes WebSockets are not supported mm. because of firewalls and strange stuff, and SSE usually works then. Mm. Yeah, uh, we have also examples with the SSE. It's it's that flying Frank demo. I, I don't mm -hmm. know if you saw it somewhere. And uh, we have uh, lately we have created a contribution to Jersey, so it can actually consume the publisher. It serves you the publisher in, in, into the method, so so you don't have to actually use the uh, SSE sync, I think, and broadcaster. It's called that mm -hmm. uh, that API in Jersey. So you can uh, actually connect it directly to the reactive pipeline. So even in the messaging, you can you know mm -hmm. register the publisher from the uh, mm -hmm. from the SSE, and, and it so works right away. It's, and it's what, easier what, to connect together right now. What you mentioned earlier is that uh, you did some changes in Heridon. And then you got, you know, notice from performance department, you broke Helidon, right? Basically. So yeah. <laughs> how it works. So is it like Helidon monitored the entire time regarding performance? So you have like a performance test or, or behind the scenes, or if you do a change, do you have nightly runs or nightly builds or how, how this works? Yeah, I, I don't exactly know the particularities. I, I, <laughs> I, I only know when, when they come to me, but... But there, there is it's like, you know, the to... people like, you know, the men in black, there's some people like with black glasses and you broke the helidon. Now fix it, right? So it works like that probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> almost like that. Yeah. And uh, they, they have some big, big, big project, which is uh, measuring the performance of the helidon and uh, every aspect of it. And uh, and uh, I have never looked into it. I, I think I, I could, I maybe will. <laughs> but, uh, but I know that the people who are working on that are really specialists in this area. So... Yeah, yeah. That, so why I'm excited about that? Because what it means is that Oracle, you know, takes Helidon seriously. I mean, it seems like it's a serious piece of infrastructure because they invest seems like a lot. So if they measure the performance and they are so obsessed about the performance, so this is like uh, some important project to Oracle. Yeah, I, I hope. Yeah, I think so. It's, a, it, it's important for us to do you know, all the people I know who are working with, with it and only. So, so I hope it's important if even in some higher levels. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah, yeah. If, if you know the, uh, I think Larry Ellison will you know draw Helidon on his you know yacht 
then then you will win you know there's like a helidon racing team by oracle or something like this right yeah yeah i, I hope he, he listens it yeah of course right he, now, he, so he, 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 he you know he's listening that, so that he, he missed he the episode about put helidon. Put the <laughs> Hi, <Larry. laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice uh, always always nice to have fun um so um you got experience with spring now you know helidon <laughs> yeah what's the opinion now i mean because i don't have a lot of experience with, with spring but i get all you know questions about spring boot and uh yeah so what what's yeah. the direct comparison so i mean spring is probably you no know, they 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 is an older framework so they have more integration plans whatever but what from the developer pers perspective or experience so what's you have a half year or one year experience with Helidon. so what's your developer impression uh, well I like the standards that that you can actually, you know, when when you create your app on, in Spring, you are locked down to Spring for a long time. So, so if something doesn't go the way you want and you would like to run away, you you just can't. But with Helidon, if you if if you really de develop based on the st micro profile specs and you you just can switch to to another implementation really easily, like to the Open Liberty you know, or to yeah. Fire. So, so, so it's it's great that there is so much, and, and you know, even if if there is a new version of Helidon and something doesn't work like you really need to, and you need to fix it right away, you can even consider to switching, and it's not so expensive, like you know, running away from Spring. So that's the thing that was always like a problem with Spring, I would say, but there wasn't so much alternatives to actually go with. But but and back I, then you were happy as a Spring developer, you said, right? So so you enjoyed the Spring. So I mean, as a developer. Yeah, yeah. But if you yeah, if you had had it on back then, would you be happy? You know, with the perform uh, startup time. I don't know. I, I have no idea about you know the comparison. Is it like comparable? Yeah, development? we have been we have been starting that Spring up. I was working on uh, in WebLogic and and it took like a few minutes before it's okay. So I thought this is more so I guess everything okay. would be better. Okay. Better. But, but when I was leaving that company, when I when I was working on the Spring, uh, they've been already migrating to Kubernetes, and our app was one of the first that was able to run in the Spring Boot. So uh, it was possible to go this way with Spring pretty easily, I guess. There's a lot of the uh, movement around the um, the native images uh, with Graal. Uh, those days, and uh, I already heard that that, that uh, Spring Boot is already able to be uh, compiled to native image. So I guess they are uh, yeah. keeping. On but the... what I have to admit is, uh, so I have lots of Quarkus projects right now, but we never compile it to GraalVM. We always run in JVM mode because already so small. What I did as a small impression with uh, Helidon, so I played with Helidon, and uh, it always felt small and nimble. So I think you shouldn't be forced to compile to GraalVM. This is the option which makes everything better. But I think what you explain, also you're using one thread, are really cautious about the performance. So um, for me, it is uh, good enough. So um, I think, you know, the GraalVM is interesting for serverless workloads or lambdas where you really have to start fast. But uh, if your application is running longer, maybe the JVM mode is even more interesting because uh, the hotspot can optimize better than the static optimization of GraalVM. Yeah, yeah I, I guess. I, I, I always thought that, that the native image would be super cool for some, you know, IoT. And you can use the Helidon on some IoT device and compile it to native because you need it to start really quickly because, you yeah. know, we want to open the garage doors or something. Yeah. But, but I, I guess that's, that, that's where it's... Where it could be really practical, but maybe maybe there will be time when when the if, when it won't be such a problem to actually compile to the native image and and the problems related with uh, with the native image compatibility will be so uh, marginal that that it will be really easy to do it and and some will someone will just calculate up that that it's uh, it's uh, cheaper to run the native images in, in the cluster than. Uh, than the JVMs. I don't know. Maybe maybe the JVMs. No, it's good to have the option. It's good to have the option, but uh, uh, yeah, I don't yeah. think uh, that the, you know the net the framework should be only you know efficient on GraalVM. It should be efficient in both. This is uh, the challenge actually. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, by the way, a feedback. What I really like in Helidon is the command line loop, the Helidon binary image. This is just great. I say Helidon in it. I have a project Helidon Dev, and it just works behind the scenes. And it works by the way differently to Quarkus. 
So Quarkus reloads on the uh, HTTP call and Helidon uh, reloads if the source changes. So this behavior is different, but uh, works. I really appreciate the command line interface, the Helidon binary, which is, by the way, built by GraalVM. So this is another, another great uh, use case for GraalVM command line interface tools. And I wrote actually a lot uh, command line interface tools for my machine just for, to automate things like create, you know, the uh, pages for my workshops. This, all this is Graal, native, native images, and this is just great. Yeah, I, I will tell it, to tell it to the guys who are working on that. They will be really happy to hear that. I think I, I heard yesterday that they already have a Windows version of the uh, on CLI. So. Yeah, so this is what uh, doesn't affect me, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, 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 but as I heard, it was quite complicated to, to make it work, so. Yeah, my feedback was why did just uh, not publish you know, just the jar as well? Because uh, I just found you know the native images on the internet, but they could just publish the jar, and then you would have the command line. You could start with Java minus jar, right? Yeah, but you know it's it's a time when every every microservice framework has its own CLI stuff, and if someone tries it in, in Go or something, and then yeah, yeah, came this looks like Go. It could start long, and th then somebody would say, okay, the Teladon is, is slow. Because then I, I ask, I ask Dimitri, like, this, this looks like Go, but I, I would write it in Java, and, and Dimitri, yeah, it is Graal, <laughs> which, which is great. So thank you. Um, it was really interesting, and uh, the next time we should you know, talk about your endeavors with, or, or would be interesting, who else you met you know, at Oracle, your next idol, after the pandemic, hopefully. Yeah, but when, when they let us back to the office, I would... Yeah, this, you are one, you know, I would like to back to Oracle office. You are one of the view developers. I really would like to, to, to meet the people, right? Um, okay, thank you. Where people can find about the reactive work, probably, if there is a link, or you've written a blog, seems like, right? Yeah, yeah we have a, we have a, uh, how is it called, the channel on Medium, the, the Helidon, and, and uh, okay. every time I do publish from time to time something about it, so... Uh, so from time to time, the, the, there is a, one of the articles is about the reactive stuff. I, I will I will create a new about the JMS connectors and, uh, and the nice. Extent, uh, the way people can find you. What's your Twitter handle and GitHub? Uh, uh, my Twitter handle is Daniel Katz, K A C, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the but GitHub. This, is I saw same. this C has uh, the Czech character, right? Some of your characters have the you know the specific Czech character, right? Uh, you, uh, no, I have no diacritics in my name, so no. So I'm I thought because the... uh, the, then would be um, we could apply, you know, these Kaminitsky's brothers, you know, uh, knowledge. Yeah, 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 to, yeah. To, 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 yeah no. it's no, yeah, it wouldn't work with me. But... Okay, <laughs> okay, thank you. It was nice to chat with you, and I would like to reinvite you back to take to 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 talk about, you know, your future work at Helidon. It was fun. Okay, great. Thanks. Bye.